unity of order n uh, is closed for multiplication and taking powers, right? So, um, this is why we like to evaluate, well, one of the reasons uh, why we like to evaluate polynomials at uh, uh, roots of unity, right? Because there is no problem with the explosion of size. That's one of the uh, features, but you see, when you choose the right concepts, right, you get more than what you put in. So besides uh, uh, controlling the size of the powers, uh, it turns out that this system has a lot of very nice properties that allow very easy multiplication of polynomials. So, um, so this just shows this uh, calculation here that we went uh, last time through. It just shows that uh, uh, any root of unity uh, is essentially just the power of the primitive root of unity with the smallest argument, namely 2 pi divided by n, right? Because if you take it to power k and then take it to power n, uh, you get this to the product nk. Now you can take n inside k outside, but omega n to the power n is just 1. So this shows that uh, uh, simply the powers of the roots of unity precisely produce uh, uh, all the all the roots of unity. So this is an extremely simple um, uh, uh, structure. Essentially, it's a cyclic group for with respect to uh, multiplication. Okay. So what uh, else do we uh, have? Um, so the important lemma is the cancellation lemma. If you have a root of unity of order kn, and you take it to some power km, these two k's can cancel out, right? Um, because if you represent it in the exponential or trigonometric form, it's easy to see that, uh, uh, right, if you take this uh, uh, root of unity of order k, uh, k uh, n to power km, well, this is e to i times 2 pi divided by kn to the power km. Of course, now this k cancels out uh, this k, and you just get a uh, root of unity of order n to the power m. So just k on top and k on the bottom in the index can be canceled. And this is particularly important for squaring if you have a root of unity of order 2n, right, taken, say, to a power k, uh, if you square it, uh, 2 and k can exchange places, and now by cancellation, lemma 2 and 2 cancel out, right, and you get that this is just omega k, uh, omega n to the power k. What does this mean? It means that the squares of the roots of unity of certain order are precisely roots of unity of half the order, right? And this is what will make our fast Fourier transform fast, right? So uh, root of uh, uh, squares of the roots of unity are just the roots of unity of half the order. So how do we put this now? at work. Um, before we do that, let's just define the concept of uh, uh, the discrete Fourier transform. Um, so this is what, what Mike was uh, saying. Now you can also have uh, in, uh, in, on the back of your mind the interpretation of DFT, which we will talk in more detail a little bit later. Uh, for example, if these uh, numbers, a0 up to an minus 1, are samples, numerical values of samples of a signal sufficiently frequently sampled, so sampled at least twice the frequency, the largest frequency present in the sound. So, for example, if your sound goes up to 20 kilohertz, uh, then you will sample it uh, at least uh, um, 40 kilohertz, 40,000 times per second. So if you sample your sound uh, 
uh, and uh, you form this sequence of samples, uh, then you form this polynomial whose coefficients are precisely the samples of the sound, namely the coefficients are the elements of this uh, uh, sequence. Now, if you evaluate uh, this thus obtained polynomial, so it's a polynomial whose coefficients are just the samples of your sound, right? If you evaluate now this polynomial at all roots of unity of order n, so the same order as many as you have the coefficients, so here we have n coefficients from 0 to n minus 1. So we evaluate this at all roots of unity of order n, and we saw the roots of unity of order n are just the power of the primitive root of unity uh, omega n, which is just uh, e to the i 2 pi divided by n, right? Now, if you take these values, uh, they will be, in general, of course, complex values because you evaluate uh, these polynomials at a sequence of complex numbers. The absolute value of these, sound, of these values, uh, so if you take modulos of each of these uh, values, uh, these are precisely the amplitudes that correspond to harmonics of that frequency. So taking the discrete Fourier transform, we will see this in a bit uh, deta more details, gives you an insight what frequencies are present in the sound, right? So if you have, for example, say 1,024 samples, which is kind of common in audio pro processing, it means that the whole bandwidth of your sound from 0 to 20 kilohertz will be split in 1,024 bins. And these values will tell you what is the amplitude of sine waves present in the sound at these frequencies, right? So it's not just a sequence of values of a polynomial. They have physical interpretation, well, kind of physical model interpretation. So for example, if you have um, uh, A2 played, uh, you will have uh, uh, at 440 hertz, uh, you will have a peak, right? So it, uh, discrete Fourier transform gives you an insight in harmonic content of the signal. In this case, harmonic content of a sound. So this is why it's so, one of the reasons why Fourier transform is so uh, important. But in this setup, first we will see how to use it just to multiply uh, polynomials very fast. And even multiplication of polynomials has its interpretation. Namely, it's the convolution, right? When you multiply two polynomials, the coefficients of the product are precisely those obtained as convolution of these two sequences. We will go over this uh, uh, once again. And this corresponds to the, for example, if you play a sound in this room, right, and you just play single tone, you will have lots of reverberations from different, uh, from walls, from different objects. So what you, if you record what, uh, or what you hear will be not just the source, but also the reverberations from all of the, over the room. Now, Con uh, this, what you will hear, is the convolution of the original sound and what's called impulse response of the, of the room. We will see later in more detail. So all of these concepts have strong physical interpretations, which, of course, just make uh, the concepts more and more um, important. So how do we uh, multiply two polynomials fast? Uh, you remember Karatsuba trick was to evaluate the polynomials from minus n to n, right? But this causes explosion of size. Instead, we will evaluate the polynomial with these coefficients uh, at the roots of unity of order 2n plus 1. Now, remember, discrete Fourier transform is defined uh, in a kind of uniform way. Namely, if your sequence has n terms, n elements, uh, 
you evaluate it at uh, roots of unity of order n. Now here you will ha need the roots of unity of order 2n plus 1, so to just kind of, it's of course for computation, this doesn't change anything, but just to have it, uh, to be able to speak uniformly and say that we are just taking discrete Fourier transform of a sequence, you can just pad it with zeros. Uh, now of course the polynomial didn't change because all the higher powers, n plus 1 up to um, 2n are multiplied by zero, so they don't count at all. But we simply now say we take the discrete Fourier transform of this sequence. Namely, uh, this is just the values of the corresponding polynomial at all roots of unity, right? So we do this for one polynomial, we do the same for the second polynomial, and just as we did in Karatsuba, oops, to compute, um, to compute the product, you then multiply the corresponding values, right? And then you have to reverse to go back from the values of the product. You want to compute the coefficients of the product polynomial, right? So the, uh, the schema is extremely simple. You have uh, two polynomials. Uh, PA and PB, multiplying them in this form with coefficients is very hard, right? It involves quadratically many multiplications. So instead, you evaluate your polynomials at 2n plus 1 many values, right? Then you multiply these values because how do you multiply two polynomials when you have the values? You simply multiply the corresponding values. So you will multiply uh, PA, say omega 2n plus 1 to power 16 with PB at 2n plus 1 to the power 16, just the corresponding uh, for the same uh, uh, powers of the root of unity. You will simply multiply. And now you have to go back uh, to compute uh, the coefficients of the uh, polynomial. So here is uh, the sch schematic view of this. So you take these two polynomials, uh, slightly padded, right, to just have uh, 2n plus 1 many coefficients. You take DFT, right, then you do pointwise multiplication, and then you take inverse discrete Fourier transform to obtain back the coefficients. And this is the sequence. So this sequence, so the, the, the coefficients so in the sound application that you heard, when you play, say you have a flute here, and, or say you have an oscillator that plays exactly one tone, what are you going to hear? You are not going to hear just this tone. You are going to hear also the response uh, or any kind of sound source. If, you, if I am talking now, you don't hear just my voice. You also hear all the reverberations of my voice from all the walls and all possible objects. So an extremely complicated uh, resulting so uh, um, sound. So the, the values of what you hear are precisely these values where A's are the samples of the sound and B is what's called impulse response of the room. So this is how the room and sound source interact. What you hear is the convolution of the samples of the sound and the coefficients of the filter. Okay, so now in order for this to be a good way of multiplying two polynomials, we know that this is a fast operation because you have 2n plus 1 values and this many multiplications, so this involves uh, linear number of uh, operations in terms of the uh, length of the, or in terms of the number of the coefficients a and b that you have, right? Um, so for this to work, so this is not a problem, but for the whole kind of schema to work, these three operations have to be also very fast, right? Not quadratic, uh, but it has, they have to be very fast. And lo and behold, uh, 
they can be faster than n to 1.001 because the efficiency is actually n log n, which is better than any slightly superlinear uh, bound. And both of these uh, conversions are done using the same algorithm, which is called the fast Fourier transform. So you see, as we said, discrete Fourier transform is truly a transform. It uh, maps uh, the sequence uh, of these coefficients into the sequence of values of the corresponding polynomial. But fast Fourier transform is not a transform, even though it uh, has transform in its name. Fast Fourier transform is just an algorithm that computes the discrete Fourier transform. So let's see how uh, this algorithm works. Uh, so uh, we have to find ways uh, to compute these uh, uh, sums uh, without performing quadratically many operations. Notice here um, we would have uh, how many, uh, we would have one, two, up to two n plus one multiplications and you have two n plus one values, so that would be quadratic. So we want to do it in a faster way. How do we do that? Well, the idea is, first of all, a few cosmetic tricks that are not terribly essential. You can assume that the length of your sequence is a perfect power of two because you want to do divide and conquer, binary divide and conquer, right? So now, um, this is not, this is easy to achieve again by zero padding. So if say I have, uh, if my polynomial, the highest power uh, is, uh, say, uh, 12. Uh, well, uh, the closest n that is perfect power of 2 is uh, 16. So I will add 0 times uh, uh, x to the 13 plus 0 times x to the 14 plus 0 times x to the 15. Because this amounts on, uh, in this way, I will have 16 coefficients. Uh, Right? And this is not terribly, doesn't slow you down terribly because for any number n, the closest power of 2 that is larger than n is smaller than 2n. Right? If you imagine your uh, number in binary, what is the closest uh, uh, power of 2 to that uh, larger than that number? Well, you simply turn all the digits, all the bits into zeros and add one in front of it. But that's clearly smaller than the number that would be obtained from your number by shifting it into the left, right? Uh, which is multiplication by two. So with a, a slow down of at most two, right? Uh, we can assume that n is a perfect power of two. Okay, so then we do the following divide and conquer trick, right? You split your polynomial. Uh, I'm sorry about this thing that jumps around. It irritates the heck out of me, but I don't know how to kill it. So, um, so um, what do we do? We split the polynomial into all even powers Remember, n is a power of 2, so n minus 2 is also even, plus all the odd powers. Now, all even powers can be expressed as powers of the square, right, of uh, the input value, right? Uh, so this will be all powers of degree at most n over 2 minus 1 of x squared. For the odd powers, you can pull out 1x, and again, you have all powers, even powers here, so you can again represent this as uh, uh, powers of the square. So now you can introduce two polynomials. The first one consisting of the coefficients of even order, all the coefficients of even order. The second consisting of all coefficients of odd order. If I substitute y by x squared, I will get precisely uh, these two uh, polynomials, right? If I substitute x squared, 
this will produce this, and x squared in the second one will produce this. Right, so then my polynomial is represented as PA, and then the first polynomial at x squared plus x times the second polynomial represented at x squared. So notice now A0 and A1 are polynomials of half the degree. But this in itself is not reduction of the problem size n into problem size n over 2. Because what is the problem of size n? Evaluate a polynomial of order n at n roots of unity. So problem of size of n over 2 is evaluate a polynomial of degree n over 2 of size n over 2 uh, at only n over 2 roots of unity. And this is where cancellation lemma comes into play because when you range with x through all roots of unity uh, of uh, uh, order uh, uh, n, the, the x squared will range only through all roots of unity of order n over 2. So this then equation indeed reduces a, a problem of size n into two problems of size n over 2, right? Because, right, um, we reduced evaluation of polynomial PA of order n minus 1, uh, of degree n minus 1, so of order n, number of coefficients, right? At inputs that are the values uh, which are roots of unity of order n to evaluation of two polynomials uh, of degree n over 2 minus 1 at points x squared. Now, as x ranges through all roots of unity of order n, the squares will range only through all roots of unity of order n over 2 because the square of these guys, the square can cancel one uh, factor 2 in the index, uh, right? So, um, uh, this is uh, what we get. Uh, evaluation of our polynomial of degree n is reduced to two evaluations of two polynomials of degree, uh, sorry, uh, let's call it order, which is degree plus one, right? Of order n at all roots of unity of order n over two only because this square cancels one, two from n. And this is where we use that n is perfect power of 2, that we will always be able perfectly to cancel one factor 2 here with the square, right? So <clears throat> plus, we have to do this still ranges over all roots of unity of order uh, n. So you have uh, the work T of n, the work needed to solve a problem of size n, is reduced to two times the work to solve the problem of order n over 2 plus linear overhead in order to multiply these values with all possible powers of the roots of unity of order n. So lo and behold, okay, so then there is a tiny little tweak. Let's ignore it. Okay, uh, so this is the, um, uh, the, the extra t trick that you do. You see, um, in this evaluation, you don't need to, you see, because this, uh, when you substitute this, right, you will get uh, this cancellation. Uh, it will become uh, omega n m, right? So um, uh, uh, this two will cancel this n here, uh, but you still have uh, to do these multiplications. Well, it turns out that you don't have to range with k all the way from 0 to n minus 1. It's enough to range only from 0 to n um, over 2 minus 1. Why? Simply because uh, when you have values larger than n over 2, so if you need the power omega n to the power uh, omega, sorry, omega 
um, n to the power k plus n over 2. So this is a number larger than n over 2. You can split this into two. And then this omega n to n over 2, this is just uh, uh, omega 2, because you can cancel n over 2. And omega 2 is just minus 1. So to make the long story short, instead of ranging with k through all values from 0 to uh, n minus 1, you can only range through all values up to n over 2, because for the larger values, you will just get a minus sign. If you compare these, these two are perfectly identical, except for this minus sign in between. So this is just a, in essential kind of little trick to speed the algorithm just tiny little bit and make it easier to write it. Uh, so uh, you see, so uh, you do this calculation only up to k equals n over 2 minus 1. For larger k, you simply replace this with the same values but with uh, minus. Uh, here. So um, here is now the algorithm. Uh, what, how does it uh, work? Well, it's just a, a, a function, recursive function that calls itself, right? So you split the sequence into two subsequences, all even and all odd ones. Then you call recursively the very same algorithm, but on a polynomial of half the size and half as many input values, right? And then you put things together, but we, you go only, so this trick here just reduces this loop instead of from k equal to zero, from zero to n minus one, it's enough to go from k equal zero to n over two minus one because for the higher powers, all what that happens is you get a minus instead of plus. And uh, uh, you start first with the zeroth power of uh, omega n, right? And then here you multiply after each round, you multiply with another omega n, which of course produces, increases the power here for, uh, from, uh, from m to m plus one, right? So uh, notice this is extremely compact. Uh, uh, algorithm and in practice runs incredibly fast. It runs in times not only n log n, but in time n log n with small constants because all these loops are so tight. So, um, what is the asymptotic uh, uh, runtime? So, t of n is replaced by twice the work. Uh, t of n over 2 plus linear overhead for this extra multiplication with all the roots of unity of order n. So this is true, and now master theorem immediately uh, tells us that the second case applies because uh, log b of a is log 2 of 2, so that's 1, so that's linear. This is also linear. So the total work is the polynomial, linear polynomial times an extra factor log n. And this algorithm, the fact that this runs uh, in such a uh, low, that has such a low time complexity, made it possible to use modems for early computers. It makes possible the encoding of your voice when you talk to, uh, on a mobile phone, a uh, very meager in amount of information, just a few kilobits per second is being sent. Uh, and uh, this compression, as Mike was showing, is done in the frequency domain. So your sound is turned uh, into discrete Fourier transform of it, right? And then only important components are encoded, taking also uh, in, uh, into account what he explained, the psychoacoustic masking. If you have one uh, large component and certain frequency, all of uh, components around it uh, that are of smaller amplitude, you cannot hear them, so you don't have to encode them. So your mobile phone, these compression algorithms wouldn't work if it wasn't for, if it weren't for uh, FFT, 
because quadratic would be way too slow, right? These chunks are about 1,024 samples. 1,024 squared is much, much, much larger than 1,024 times the log of that, uh, right? Uh, so um, this is really, that, that explains why this algorithm is so important. Uh, so this is what you use in the forward direction. You have your coefficients, you evaluate your polynomial in time n log n. Now, you need also the inverse operation. When you have the values, you want to find the coefficients. And now, almost a miracle happens because to invert, you use essentially the same algorithm. So going from the coefficients into the values uh, is done essentially using the very same algorithm with just minus sign uh, change. So this is what we want to see next. So this is, of course, now this is the Van der Mond matrix with values that are uh, roots of unity of, or, of the various order from uh, here from 0, 1, 2, up to n, right? Um, multiplying with the, the coefficients or the samples of your sound produces the values. And now we know that inverse transform, transformation is done by, uh, if you multiply both sides with the inverse of this matrix, you get here only this. And here on the right hand side, you get this inverse matrix. Now, the magic, this is what I call, what I said, it's almost a miracle. The inverse of this matrix is simply obtained by putting negative exponents everywhere and dividing the whole matrix, so the all values, just by n. So inversion is trivial, right? Um, so the inverse of this matrix is simply the matrix, exactly the same matrix, with minus sign put everywhere on top, right? And uh, dividing it with, uh, um, dividing everything by n. But if you multiply this matrix, uh, that's essentially <coughs> like multiplying with that matrix, except that the role of omega n is replaced by the role of conjugate, complex conjugate, uh, of uh, omega n, right? Because of this exponent, uh, that uh, this minus will just conjugate uh, this complex number, right? So this means uh, that uh, um, uh, that uh, inversion of this matrix is uh, particularly simple. Let's verify that uh, this matrix uh, divided by n is inverse of that matrix. Well. If I multiply one row here with one column here, then the entry in the product consists, so this is one row here with one column, jade column here, so i row, jade column. So if you multiply this, uh, this is what you get. It's sum of these products when you have here omega n to i k, and here omega n to minus jk. When you put it together, this is omega n to i minus jk. Now there are only two cases to consider. If i is equal to j, what is this sum equal to? Each of these n, exactly, because i minus j is 0. Omega n to 0 is 1, so you have to sum uh, one n many times, so this will be just n. If i is not equal to j, then this is just a geometric series with a ratio equal to omega n um, uh, to i minus j. How do we find the sum of n uh, of the of a geometric series? You just increase this power to one more than you have here. So this will be n, right? And here is just one minus q. So this is just one minus q to the n divided by my one minus q. 
where q is the ratio, right? But this, now you can swap i minus j and n, and you get omega n to the power n, which is 1, to i minus j is 1, 1 minus 1 is 0. So the whole product looks like this. On the diagonal, when i is equal to j, you get n's. Everywhere else, you get zeros. So this means precisely that the inverse of this matrix is just this matrix, right, divided by 1 over n to generate 1's instead of n's here. Now, this makes the inverse algorithm particularly simple because what do you do? Um, you do the following. Here is your inverse algorithm. Everything remains the same with one exception. Instead of uh, the root of unity of order n, right? So instead of e to the i 2 pi divided by n, you take this with a minus n value, right? So that's the only place. So the whole structure is the same, except that here, omega, um, uh, the omega will range through all conjugates of the roots of unity of order n. But the whole computation remains identical, and at the very end, you divide everything by n, right? And this is, lo and behold, implemented when it's done in hardware. It's exactly the same circuit. It's called, it's a kind of cascade of what's called butter for, uh, butterfly circuits. Uh, and all what is being changed is uh, f instead of feeding e to the uh, i 2 pi divided by n, you just uh, feed the complex conjugate. Uh, so the FFT and IFFT are essentially <coughs> one and the same algorithm with this minor change. Uh, okay, now important thing is that in computer science books, the forward operation, you evaluate uh, uh, your polynomial at all roots of unity. And inverse operation, you then uh, evaluate, uh, you then, um, uh, you, when you go inverse, you have minus one here. Uh, but in electrical engineering literature, it's the other way around. The forward operation is actually evaluation of your polynomials at complex conjugates of the roots of unity. Uh, technically, neither of them is better. But conceptually, the convention that electrical engineers use is much better because everything that you do here is, which we will see next time, is nothing but change of base. So what we are going to show next time is that this whole computation reduces to a simple geometric picture. Let me show you the picture. Here it is. If you have a vector, say, in 3D, you can represent it in terms of unit vectors that are orthogonal, and the size of the projection of your vector to these three vectors, right? Well, what FFT does simply changes the basis. Instead of the standard base 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, and so forth, it takes the bases whose coordinates are powers of uh, uh, the, uh, are complex exponentials, uh, right? Essentially, you will be representing, you will take sinusoidal oscillations uh, of increasing frequency and project your signal onto this so sinusoidal operation, uh, sinusoidal waveforms. Uh, so you see FFT, and I don't know, even in electrical engineering literature, they don't do it that way, when in fact, we will see next time, the whole this business, all this mess of formulas can be seen as a simple geometric picture. 
right? And uh, the taking FFT will be shown to be simply operation of change of base, uh, right? A base that is kind of more informative than the usual uh, base. Uh, Okie dokie, so we just have enough for that. So you will see the rest. So this is the plan. Uh, hopefully next time we will finish FFT and that's the end of kind of heavily mathematical stuff. After that we will do greedy and then a few graph algorithms and then dynamic programming. So just uh, cope with a bit of math um, because it's